I know and God knows that I love this family dearly. It's it's a family that I cannot exchange with anything. With anything. I've been around for some time now and God keeping me alive. I'm not planning to go anywhere because I am home. This is this is home for me. I am settled. Um Sam is my name. Samuel Degwa Duku. Those those are even if you hospital, it is a bank. Atakwa bank. Ninaidanga bank pia. Atakwa bank. That's that's how I am known. Um, and I thank God so much for for His goodness. This far. This far. Enough about me. Let's get to the word of God. Um, so we are still we are still doing a recap. We are still back back to the pillars, the values that that define who we are. And we were given specific instructions that we stick there. And so that is exactly what I am going to do. I am going to obey. And as I was thinking about what, so thinking and praying about what we are going to share today, I just found myself going back to where, where did this begin? Where did this series begin? You know, this series about about our our values. How did this sermon series begin? How have we found ourselves here talking about these things again? We began this series about four months ago, and this sermon series was born as a result of a feeling of desperation on the side of the father of this house. Most of you will know him. And today I want to copy Lawrence Kidogo at our to our YouTube. Ni Mwenyari preach that other Sunday. <laughs> you have been seeing him. He was, he, he was feeling some level of desperation about our in, ineffectiveness. So how ineffective we had become or we had begun to become concerning the values that define us. We had fallen into the trap of becoming just consumers of information, which we have no lack of here. We used to hear, we know these things, we can recite these things, yet there was no transformation happening from the hearing. The information was remaining at that level. Information is good, but it's only as good as when it is taken to the other level and it causes a transformation in our lives. I also found <laughs> that this sermon series was supposed to happen over two Sundays. <laughs> Before we got back to 2 Corinthians, for those that remember, but four months later, we are still here. And I asked myself, why? Why? And at the top of my mind, what I came up with was, it's because unless we get to understand again who we are, every other sermon series, including Second Corinthians, will just be good for our information. And it will not bring about transformation. So the way I see today's, today's sermon is a cleaning, a cleansing of our lenses. And so I brought, I brought my glasses today. These are my glasses. Allow me to wear them. 
And I know Lawrence is very happy. Now, what you do not know is I can't see you clearly. Why? Because before I came here, I ensured that my lenses are blurred. They are full of dirt. And I am adding more even now. So I am seeing you, but I can't tell clearly what is really happening. And the way I see today's sermon is a cleansing of the lenses. A cleansing of the lenses so that we can begin to see again clearly who we are. We can begin to see again what we have been called to do, what we have been called to be in Christ. And that is exactly what I intend to do. I may not bring a new idea, but I want to trust God that at the end of this sharing, our lenses will be clean. Our lenses will be refocused. I don't know whether there is anyone amongst us who has used a binoculars before. Na binoculars ni ile kikitu watu wanatumianga kuona vitu vikombali vinakuja karibu. How many people have had the opportunity to use a binoculars? I can see George, I can see Lawrence. At a Gladys, a group of schools. So when you are using a binoculars, you must bring the item you are trying to see to focus. Hello? You may have the binoculars and end up not seeing anything. And the way I see, the way I see these values, the values, I'll write them here in a few. The way I see the values that define who we are is they give us a world view. They are the lenses with which we see and with which we do life. Praise the Lord. And I'm feeling, or rather, the feeling of the father of the house was that we, the lenses of those binoculars, the lenses with which we see life, had become blurred. So we need to refocus them. And that is exactly my endeavor today. Again, three pillars that define who we are. My handwriting is better than yeah, James. That one I am sure. <laughs> so three things that define who we are. Don't you think? Gospel. Community and mission. They say the people who write, who have a bad handwriting, think too fast. I don't know those who have a nice one. I believe I do. <laughs> Which category we fall? Three things that define who we are. Gospel, community, and mission. Is this gospel or gospel? Gospel. Gospel. <laughs> you know, in my mind, I am thinking in English, but Wakati Ninasema, it's rounded off to the nearest mother tongue. So you will understand in case I. Nikishema, Munehurumie. Gospel, community, and. Wachani andike hii, so that nisikwaze watu. Mission, missional. So we add the missional. So that we make it a bit, a bit different from the common idea of mission out there. I'll explain that um, in a few. Now you realize that these three pillars, these three values, are so much in the words of our Father, intricately intertwined, that it's it's impossible to talk about one without referring to the other. I will try. But you will realize that from time to time, zitakwazina intertwine. Intertwine. And this is, this is the way I see us. As a family that gathers here, we are a gospel community on mission. We are a gospel community on mission. So let's, let's unpack. Let's unpack gospel. We are a gospel-centered people. We are not a how-to, someone's kind of people. 
Our sermons are not how to become rich, how to name them. Our sermons are not 17 ways of soaring the heights like an eagle. We love the story of the Bible. From Genesis to Revelation. And we, play, we pay close attention to the sub-stories and the subplots they are in. Praise the Lord. But we do this in the context of the overarching, the whole story that is unfolding in the story of the Bible. So whatever part of scripture we read here is read and interpreted in the context of the whole story of the Bible. The gospel is the basis of our other two values. There can't be a community. That community can't be missional unless we have understood the gospel. This is the foundation. This is, this is what makes us primarily who we are. And these other two are a reaction of how well we have been defined by the first value. And as, as we pay attention to the story of the Bible, we are never stuck. We are never stuck. We are careful to listen and hear what God is in saying, what God is saying in that season. And we go by it. Because the God that we believe in, the God who has given us the gospel, is not a stationary God. He is constantly on the move. And so we are also constantly on the move. And that is why I want to encourage us that we will not be left behind. We are not a people here who cling so much to the experiences we have had in the past. Praise the Lord. In my opinion, it doesn't matter a lot when you came and became a part of this family. What matters is how well you have grasped the gospel that defines who we are. You could be here six, seven years Probably even came before gospel life was begun. I don't know how that is possible. But if you have not grasped what defines us, a person who came yesterday and has grasped is much better than you are. We are constantly in transition. So I have said we are a gospel-centered people. Why are we gospel-centered? So, we have a gospel and a gospel. If you have a gospel, round off, nearest mother tongue, gospel. Why are we gospel centered? Number one, because God rules and governs the world through the gospel, which is his word. Praise the Lord. And we are part of that world. We are ruled, we are governed by the gospel. I'll not belabor that point. Number two, because the church, the church, the church, the whole church of God, but also this church that gathers here, Gospel Life Community Church, is created and governed by God's word. That is why without the gospel, we cannot exist. Number three, because the gospel is the power that brings salvation. The gospel is the power that brings salvation. It is through the gospel that we were saved, we are being saved, and we will be saved. It's the gospel that gives the shalom of God. It's the gospel that gives peace with God and in God. Praise the Lord. And finally, because the gospel carries the life of God. And that is the life that we dispense as a community while being missional. One of the ways that the gospel assumes centrality, one of the ways that the gospel is, one of the ways a community is gospel-centered, in, in our ministry, and, and when I'm talking about ministry here, I am not talking about what I am doing now, only. This is ministry, what I am doing. But what you were doing yesterday evening, and what you did this morning, is still part of ministry. 
One of, one of the ways the gospel assumes centrality in our ministry and life is for it to assume a centrality in history for us so that our efforts in whatever we do would open our eyes to see that from eternity to eternity that Jesus, the gospel, is central. Let me create a picture for you by distinguishing what I mean when I say that that the gospel is at the center, that Jesus is the center of our ministry. If I say center, most of you will probably think of a circle. I got you. It is in my mind too, but that's, that's not the gist of what I want to say. Probably you have even heard someone indicating that life works as a solar system. The gospel is at the center, like the sun. Its massive brightness makes everything beautiful, and its gravity holds everything in place in life. So it's it's like all of us went to all of us went to school. I want to believe. And we were taught the solar system, isn't it? And we were told. That there is a body here called, called what? The sun. And then here are the planets. Isn't it? Beginning with Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn. Keep going. Uranus, Neptune. Pluto iliondolewa. Sinikweli? It's true. We even used to have a song we used to sing. Now, there's, there's this picture of the gospel being the sun on which everything else is hinged. And that's, that's okay. That's okay. But that's not the picture I have today. What I have in mind is a line, not a circle. I have the picture of a line. And this is how that line looks like. Those who have done mathematics, I believe it's all of us again. You have ever drawn a line like that, isn't it? Now, when I talk about the gospel being at the center, this is what I'm talking about. Here is Jesus or you can call this the cross. At the center of history is Jesus and the cross. This is eternity. This is eternity past. And this is, go with me, eternity, eternity future. The gospel is at the center such that Everything that has happened from eternity past was looking forward to this moment. The moment of the cross. And as we read the story of the Bible, that is how we read it in this church. That everything points to Jesus and the cross. And everything that has happened beyond the cross also refers back to the gospel. This is the kind of a family we are. That our lives, our lives, who we are, is interpreted with respect to the transaction that happened at the cross, which is the gospel of our salvation. Praise the Lord. So I am, I am, I am a believer that even my forefathers point to Jesus. Hello? Hello? I believe the gods that they were worshipping, the fact that those gods could not fulfill their promises, the fact that those gods, they, they had to sacrifice to them every time, every time, points to Jesus. What we are reading in the morning in Hebrews, that it is here that everything was changed. So, living on this side of the cross, and this is where all of us are living now, we are living in a time called but Christ. Praise the Lord. 
Our forefather said that if you do not bring me a shuka or a dress or a blanket, this and this will happen to you. But Christ, hello, our forefather said that because you did not bring dowry for your mother who died 72 years ago, the dowry that will be brought must be taken due to who and who. But this is, this is the time we are living. The time of but, but Christ. He paid it for us. All of it. All of it. So we don't care what they said. Hello? We don't care what they said. The gospel answers our life questions that we struggle with every day. And we did this here the other day. Who am I? A question that we always ask. Who am I? And when we ask the question, who am I? Chances are, we go back to this eternity past to try and dig who we are. It is fine to do that. But remember, whatever this says, there is a bad Christ. Praise the Lord. Hello? My aunt, my aunt's aunt's grandmother was not married. My my father's great grandfather was a womanizer. And so, that is why I am struggling with sexual sin. I am presenting the gospel to you today. But Christ, but Christ, that is what defines who we are. What is my problem? It's a question we keep asking. What is my problem? And then we ask, what is the solution? What's the solution? I present to you the solution. Behold, what is my problem? What is my problem? Who am I? What is my problem? What is the solution? The gospel gives us identity. Gives us identity. And when we are talking about the gospel, we are talking about Jesus Christ here. We are talking both about the person and the work. The works of Jesus Christ. Who he is, who he was, and what he has done. Hello? And not just what he has done. It's what he has done, what he is doing, and what he will he will do. That is why we can say, but Christ. But Christ. Praise the Lord. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you think your problem is. I present to you the solution. Christ. And that is our foundation. Otherwise, the community that will be formed, if the gospel is not the foundation, will be based on thy, for those who understand, praise the Lord, will be based on, let me explain. Where I come from, Mahali ni metoa iyo rounding off. Where I come from, and I believe all of you come from somewhere, there are traditions. There are traditions. And now that we are in central province, this, these traditions are so much rooted. I said the other day, I am in a WhatsApp group myself with my friends of people. So the, the foundation of the WhatsApp group is thy. So it was formed so that we keep the culture of, of traditionists. Hello? Hello? I know you have a cousin or a brother. Do I take it even further? Or a father or a mother who believes in these things. And any time you try to do something, they take you back. They take you back there. I am in a group. And before anything is said in the group, there must be those greetings. And I never reply. And one day somebody got a bit perturbed. Why doesn't this guy reply to what we are saying? 
And so he asked me, thank God he did. Thank God he did. Because we had a long conversation. And do you know what the conversation was about? But Christ. I took him back, back here, and I told him, it's either you believe in Jesus or you believe in tradition. You can't have it both ways. Stick to one, stop confusing us. Hello? And I pray today that somebody will get the courage to say that to some people who are very close to you. Molly. <laughs> Gladys. Can you tell your father to his face? Think about it. Think about it. Whenever the gospel is faithfully taught, whenever this foundation is faithfully dispensed, there arises a community of God's people. There arises a community of God's people. And this is our second value. This is our second pillar. So what is a gospel community? A gospel community is a community of spirit-empowered Christians devoted to one another and committed to living out and sharing the gospel with those they know and love and even those that they don't. And by don't there, I mean they don't know and they don't love. That is the gospel community. A people empowered by the spirit who are devoted to one another and they are committed to living out and sharing the gospel with those they know and love and those they, they don't. And I want us today to look at just a few characteristics of a gospel community. A few characteristics. And the characteristic number one is something that we have talked over and over again. But we said this sermon is about what is this sermon about? It's about cleansing the lenses. So let me, let me cleanse your lens a bit and remind you one of the things that define the community that we are in. It's a community that is characterized by two values. Love and love and what? Love and trust. Now, the community of God's people, a gospel community, is particularly comprised of fathers and sons. And, and this is the way it happens. This is the way it happens. We have, we have fathers and we have sons, but among these sons, there are fathers who have sons. And of course, those fathers are also sons. I hope I have not lost you. That's how the, the community of God's people looks like. Unfortunately, unfortunately, most of the communities that purport to be God's community just exist in oblivion. They exist in oblivion. They, they, are, not, they are not answerable to anyone. Sons do, are they even sons? People do what they feel like they want to, to do. But we believe in a community of fathers and sons. And I know, I know. I know there's a lot of discussion, a lot of debate that, that surrounds fatherhood and sonship because it has also been abused. But our community is characterized by love and trust. Fathers love their sons so much that they are not abusive to those sons. Praise the Lord. And the sons in turn trust their fathers. So that they are vulnerable to those fathers. That is the kind of community we are. And this right here, this right here, love, is the foundational feature of a gospel community. And I want to illustrate something. 
As I was reading some article of the many articles I read, I try to. I know you also try. Hata kama ni ni tea. Hata kama ni ile tea inakuwa simu unajua mtu akupeana tea. Unajifanya amujui? Huh? The tea master. Sounds familiar? Sounds familiar? Declassified. Sounds familiar? HNIB. Sounds familiar? Whichever articles you read. As I was reading one of the articles, I came across something that I think is very profound. Let me educate you a bit. I want you to assume that is a straight circle. Perfect circle. And here you are beginning to get ideas what I am drawing. Isn't it? What does that look like? A clock. Sindio. Now, as I was reading this article, it had this kind of a picture. Now, in the military, in the military, they use they use these four points of the clock. 12 o'clock, this is 3 o'clock, this is 6 o'clock and this is 9 o'clock. I said I am educating you. So follow. Sam, kuja. Nemsek, kuja. So assuming I am with my brother here who happens to be my namesake. And and we are doing whatever we are doing. I want you to stand in front of me. Angalia huko. So he is standing in front of me. This is my 12 o'clock. Are you beginning to get it? This is my 12 o'clock. This is my Go with me. 3 o'clock. This is my Nine o'clock. And this is my six o'clock. Chances are, chances are, if, if, we have, if we have an enemy we are fighting with, I am able to see my 12 o'clock. Am I not? Am I not able to? And if I turn my eyes like this, I can see my three o'clock. If I turn my eyes like this, I can see my nine o'clock. How about my six o'clock? Can I see it? Now, if Sam, if Sam is moving towards the enemy, and I am with him, is he seeing a six o'clock? Can the enemy come from the back? Can the enemy come from the back? Now, as come, 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 twenty ten, up, I move, move. So, as we are moving, as we are engaging with the world, I'm now applying it to our Christian life. As we are engaging in the world, we have enemy that we are engaging with constantly. And chief among them is the devil. Isn't it? And he can attack from any side. He can attack from the 12 o'clock, from the 3 o'clock, from the 6 o'clock, I mean 9 o'clock, from the 6 o'clock. You need someone to watch your 6 o'clock. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You need someone to watch your 6 o'clock. So that as we are moving and something happens behind, I can see his 6 o'clock. And the assumption is there's someone who is watching my six o'clock. Now in the military, they call that, I got your six. You can have a seat, thank you. I got your six or I got your back. I submit to you today. You need someone to get your back. And that is the characteristic of love and trust. Do you trust that the person watching you at six is good enough? Do you? Does that person love you enough to watch you at six? Brethren, I submit to you, that is how the military are very tight. Because they always have someone watching their six. And today I want I want to, to say as many as you are here today I got your six. I got your six. Each one of you I got your six. I am watching out for the enemy 
go forth and do wonders for the kingdom because you know you trust that you have a brother you have a sister in this community that is watching your six praise the lord i know the father of this house will see this someone on youtube and i want to promise to him today as many as we are here we got your six dad we got your six and we know that you got our six too you got our back praise the lord let me submit to you brethren if you engage with life alone if you are not part of a gospel community you will get attacks from all sides because no one got your six but this is it this is it it can't be that everyone got your six and you got nobody's six Kwani, what kind of a person are you you are not watching anybody's back you are moving like a drunk person you want to watch your 12 watch your 3 and also watch your what you don't know is when you turn this becomes your new 12 and you have a new praise the lord tell your neighbor i got your six got your six the second characteristic the second characteristic of a gospel community is that the community of god comprises of people at different stages of transformation the community of god comprises of people at different stages of transformation different stages of of transformation am i still is my hydrating still good encourage me at least we are at different stages of transformation and i want to add all of us all of us all of us are constantly being transformed you remember the stages in the transformation the life cycle of an insect and her shouted egg larva pupa adult in the community of god's people you will never get to adult stage hello we are constantly being transformed to that stage and that will happen when everything will be consummated when everything will be made perfect at the return the second return of Jesus Christ therefore therefore bearing in mind that all of us are work in progress i want to quote lawrence that we must not be quick to pull out a scorecard we must desist from grading anyone brethren do not have a checklist we are all work in progress we are work in progress so when you rub shoulders the wrong way with your brothers and sisters understand that they are also work in progress probably you thought that they are being transformed to the adult stage na bado wako pale kwa egg it's when they are being transformed into a pupa i said the length of stay doesn't matter what matters is how well you have grasped the gospel that makes us who we are so do not run away again i quote james leo ni kuquote watu tu thank god how watu wako in our midst i quote james if you cross paths with any of your brothers and sisters na mimi nikaongeza hapa or even your father because of what god has done for you through this family remain around let me use difficult english cut people some slack allow people some room to make mistakes why because sin is still around and you are not any better you are also working progress but does that mean that we will not point out evil when it comes we will point it out 
but with love and grace. With love and grace. Let me quote myself. As I keep saying, if you are at home, you will remain. But if you are not, please go and find a home. Usi tu haribie. I have quoted myself. Psalm 2021. I charge you, my brothers and sisters, that as, as we do family, as we do family, remember to watch out for pride. Remember that, Simon? Remember to watch out for familiarity. And remember to give honor where honor is due. Because in the family of God, there is order. There is order. The family of God isn't confused. Things don't run haphazardly. Just at a, as it is in the natural, the father of the house is the head of the family. Hello? Hello? I am saying, just as it is in the natural, the father of the house is the head of the family. And just like you are not familiar with your father at home, do not get familiar with the father of this house. Do not get familiar. And how do we get familiar? Ah. Si huyu ni daddy tu. Najua hata ni forgive. Na maisha iendele. Iendele. Si ali deal hivyo na Stella, hata mimi ata deal na mimi. Hivyo. Hivyo hivyo. Familiarity breeds contempt. Respect and honor your father. Respect and honor your father. And how do you respect and honor your father? Through obedience. Through obedience. And I added this, and I want to stress this. Through giving. What wa camera wanaona? Through giving. Through giving. Remember Galatians 6. Give us Galatians 6. 10. So that I stop quoting myself and James and Lawrence. Let me quote the word of God. So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good. I want, I want six, six from verse six. Verse six. One who is taught the word must do what? Must share all good things with those, the one who? The one who teaches. And so this is what I am saying, brethren. Share all good things with the one who Teaches. Be the one who teaches. Pay your tithes. Give your offering. I wish I had a way of making this bold and underlined. Pay the rent of this all. It is bad manners not to do that. That is not being part of a gospel community. That is remaining at egg. We need you to move at least to lava, headed to adult. We cannot keep singing this song over and over again. We cannot keep this saying for your information. That is not what we are doing here. This word ought to transform you. And, and you know, you know, this family, we are not interested in your money if you are not part of us. You can keep your money. But if you have become part of us, give us your money. Praise the Lord. But how will you give us your money if you cannot, if you cannot take good care of this, the money or little money you make? How? You will always be running from one corner to, to the other. And this is what I believe, brethren. This is what I believe. It doesn't matter how much you make. 
if you are not a good manager, if you are not a good steward of the resources that God has given you, you will always be running helter skelter as your feeble legs can carry you. But even if you make how, how little money, if you are a good steward, you will have money for everything. For everything. You can't be seated here hearing the word of God every day and when it comes to the end of the month and you get your check or end of week or end of day and you have some money, you allocate money to everything else and forget the family of God. That is bad manners. That is being irresponsible. That is lacking to honor those who deserve honor. Bado muna nipenda. I want to say something else. That the elders who serve under the father of the house dispense delegated authority. Respect and honor those who have authority over you. By honoring them, you honor your father and you honor God. Hello? Nimeharibika leo? Nisawa. Nisawa. Praise the Lord. You must honor those that have been put, those that have authority over you. You must honor them. You must honor them. You must honor them. That is the only way we will get to the place where we love and trust one another. I will only have your six if I know that you have mine. But it can't be that I am watching out for your six and you are busy backbiting me. Hello? It cannot work. You will get us killed in battle. You know we are in battle? You know it's funny, it's funny that it's only in the Christian community where we have so many soldiers in the battlefield who are not ready to fight. They are just, they are doing their own things. The enemy is coming from this side, some are running to this side. Some are running to settle bills with our Zazi. Some are running to please their boyfriends and girlfriends and their wives and husbands. But we have a focus. We have a focus. Praise the Lord. Finally, the community of God's people, the community of God's people is what? Yes? Multiplicative as opposed to additive. It's multiplicative and not not what? Not additive. Let me explain. The gospel community, who we are, must be engaged in the mission of God. Where we fail as a community of God's people is we concentrate on the first two. Gospel, then... Community. And when we get to community, we stop. We stop there. And once, once we stop here, what happens is this community of God's people becomes caretakers. They begin to take care of one another. They don't want anybody to go away. So, we must deal with one another with care. Because if we don't, some people will run away. And so the vision of that community becomes one of maintaining the family. We become a maintenance church. And whenever a community of God adopts such a vision, conflicts are inevitable. Again, because we said we are a work in progress, people will rub shoulders. And now what happens is, 
the work of the head of the family becomes one of solving solving problems, solving conflicts, solving conflicts. The pastor's office becomes a court. Sababu huyu alidunga huyu jicho na huyu akagonga huyu elbow. So, the pastor must sit and hear. Kwa nini ulimuduga? Macho. Ni kwa sababu alikuwa na niangalia vibaya. And because the pastor doesn't want any of you to go, anasema sawa, mwabie pole na umununulie dawa ya ya macho. The family of God's people, the gospel community, is multiplicative in this sense. It doesn't stop at community, but it is comprised of disciples who make disciples who make disciples who make disciples who make and you go and go and go. That is how it is multiplicative. Because one disciple is made and that disciple makes a disciple. How many people have done multi-level marketing? Is GNLD familiar to you? You know how it operates. At the apex is one guy. That guy recruits someone. And that guy recruits another. And another on this side. Na inaenda hivo. It's not a very good example, but that is how the, the community of God is. Disciples who make disciples who make disciples who make disciples. So the answer, the answer to the stagnation that happens when we stop at community is what forms our third pillar. And what is that pillar? What is that pillar? Say it. That pillar is that pillar is missional. Now I want I want to begin this by saying we don't have a mission of our own. We don't have a mission of our ours is the mission of God. Praise the Lord. That is why we don't have a mission statement anymore. Remember what I said. I said, we are careful to hear the story of the Bible. And when we do, as we hear the story of the Bible, we move with God in the seasons. There was a season when we had a mission statement. And a vision statement. And it gave me a lot of headache to try and cram and capture. But this season, our mission is the mission of God. It's the mission of God. Number two. Number two of what I want to say is that we are all sent on a mission. Whose mission? God's mission. But what does that mean? Am I now a missionary? Or am I a missionary? And this is where we need to clarify the language a bit. So that we understand why we say we are missional. The most widely known definition of a missionary is a member of a religious group who has been sent to an area, who has been sent to an area to promote their faith or provide services such as education, literacy, social justice, healthcare, economic development, head of thinking capacity. That is, that is the basic definition of a missionary. The term mission, no? The term? So at least what I have described as a missionary, someone who has been sent away from where, where they normally are to go and promote a certain thing. Religious, medical, social justice, economic development, Nakadalika. The term missional describes a mission shaped life. In other words, if I am living a missional life, I am living a life that is shaped by God's mission. 
Now, as you begin to examine scriptures, and as you begin to understand the heart and mission of God, you begin to see that people who have been made new in Christ must live as agents of his mission. And this is what shapes us. That is what being missional is. You have been saved by Christ, and so you are an agent of the mission of God, of the mission of Christ. I will not read this. John 20, John 20, 21 to 22. John 20, 21 to 22. You can project it. Atakama tutasoma. Here, Jesus commissioned his disciples to go before he ascended to the Father. He tells them, he tells them, peace be with you as the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. I'm sending you. Jesus was sent in the world to show off the Father. He did the job flawless. He perfectly showed the love of the Father. Remember John 1, 14. All the way, 18. Going downwards. Jesus inaugurated the Father's kingdom by caring for the least of this. And he demonstrated God's power by the proclamation of God's kingship. Now, say now, now, because we are living in the part of but Christ, Jesus continues to reveal God to the world, but he is doing this through his people by the power of God. And who are Jesus' people? Who are Jesus' people? Those who have been sent to faraway lands, they are probably. But we are also God's people just as they, just as they are. What Jesus is saying here is if you are a follower of Christ, if you have been born again by the power of the gospel, you are sent. It doesn't matter what you call it. Whether you call it a missionary or being missionary or any other variant. I submit to you that the responsibility for the mission of God, for the so-called missionaries, and those who live in their hometown, like ourselves, for the entire of their lives, is the same. It is the same. The difference between the missionary, I wrote this, the difference between the missionary in Kargi, in Samburu, in Kandahar, in Afghanistan, or in Hanoi, in Vietnam. And a GLCC member in Dika, in Kiambu, in Rostas, or wherever it is, is not in the ascentness, but it is in the context and the ways through which they pursue their life of mission in God. Let me say that again. The difference between the missionary in Samburu, in Afghanistan, in Vietnam, and a member of this community who resides in Dika or in Kiambu or in Rostas or in, you know those places you stay, isn't it? It's not in the ascentness. It's not in the fact that they have all been sent. It is in the context and the ways through which they live their life, they pursue their life of mission in God. This is what I am saying, in short, that all of us are sent. The question is, where and among whom? Where and among whom? And where we have been sent is within but also without. Without. Now, we cannot pursue this life of mission using dated and obsolete techniques like we have done in the past. This is not the time for crusades. Hello? This is not the time for door to, to door as we know it. It is bad manners. <laughs> it is bad manners. 
It is bad manners. Do I say this or I don't? I'm reconsidering. Okay. Let me remove bad manners and say it is not wise. <laughs> you know what it is. It is not wise. To go knocking people's houses all over and with no care of what they are engaged in and asking them to give you five minutes, which ends up being that a five minutes. You are the one who is making people loathe the things of God, hate the things of God. You look very lazy. That you can, you can stop what you are doing and you go knocking people's. Am I saying that we cannot do that? I, I am not saying that. There is a place for that. But that can't be all there is you do. And you are doing this while you have left. In the case of KU, that a thousand students in KU. Kwani, what is wrong with you? Let me ask, let me quote our father. <laughs> what is wrong with you? We must become a creative mission or community, reaching within and without. And this is the question I am asking as I am coming close to conclude. What is your contribution in this endeavor? What is your contribution in this creativity? What can you offer? Let me ask it otherwise. What can you supply? And the question is, are you supplying? Are you supplying? Ephesians 4, you read verse 16. Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4. Maybe you back, back Kidogo. Back Kidogo. We may end up going back all the way. Let's, let's read from here. And Jesus gave, God gave, apostles, he gave. This is, this is, this is uh, I believe, a common, a common part of scripture we know. He gave apostles, prophets, evangelists, shepherds, and teachers to the church. Why? To equip the saints for the work of ministry. And his ministry in, on Sunday. Does ministry happen on Sunday alone? For building up the body of Christ until we go all the way to adult. Remember in the life cycle, we go to adult. And how does the adult look like? The unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, the mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every weed of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness in deceitful schemes. Rather, tell your friend, rather, speaking the truth in, can you see love and trust somewhere there? We are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, and that head is Christ, from whom all of us, this whole body, is joined and held Together, by what? By what? Every, every joint with which it is equipped. Now this is it. When each part is working properly. When this happens, it makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. Ask your neighbor, are you working properly? And KJV says, with every part supplying. With every part supplying. Our mission or calling, our mission or calling, takes any of one of many different ways. It looks like powerful orators like Peter, Stephen, and Paul speaking the gospel 
concisely and with clarity. That is one way that this mission happens. There are those that are orators. It looks like Philip, who God uses in the right time and in the right place in a sort of way. You remember the story of Philip with the Ethiopian eunuch? It looks like some people here whose names are difficult. So probably we can see their names. Acts, get, take us to Acts 6, 1 to 7. Very quick. Acts 6. Now in these days when the disciples were increasing in number, a complaint by the Hellenists arose against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected. So there was a problem in the early church. That's, that's the background. Uh huh. And then the 12 apostles summoned the full number of disciples and told them it is not right that we who are committed to doctrine stop dispensing doctrine and begin to deal with these things. Okay? Therefore, brothers, pick out from among you seven men of good repute, full of the spirit of the wisdom, who we will give the work to do this. And we will devote ourselves to prayer and the ministry of the word. And what they said pleased the whole gathering, and so they chose these people. So mission looks like the 12 apostles dispensing the doctrine, but also as this man, Stephen, a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit, and Philip, these are the men I was saying their names are a bit difficult to pronounce. And Prochorus, probably this is where Chorus came from. And Nicanor, and Timon, and Parmenas, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch. It looks like Barnabas and Lydia, who leveraged their wealth and resources in generosity. They offered their wealth so that the kingdom of God would Continue. Let me make, take it, bring it home. It looks like Stella and the music team who lead us in music here every other Sunday as the rest of us, myself included, make a joyful noise to the Lord. It looks like Penina and Anne and Molly and Gradis and Grace and all the others who take care of the physical aspects of our gathering. It looks like James and the technical team as they fold wires and do mic checks as they take us nice photos and videos. It looks like Lawrence with his eloquent alluringly alliterative sermons. Remember this. The party, the problem, the petition the provision, the purpose of Jesus' miracle at Cana of Galilee. That is part of mission. It looks like Christine making chapatis and serving her customers. That is mission, guys. It looks like Charlene and Betty weighing Kamande and Dengu and Pishori. It looks like Augusta Helping customers to fit into the jumper and that sweatpant. Hello? And I can go on and on and on. It looks like Mishek meeting all of us for coffee. Feeling our pains and our joys with us. But here is the problem. Here is the problem. We have created a very top-down system. Now, I'm not suggesting a bottom-up. We have created a very top-down system in our churches where it is the sage, the pastor or the leader from the stage who makes mission happen. The rest of us, the rest of us, our mission becomes just invite people to church. Wakuja wasikia mutua. I believe that all of us have a unique story of how Jesus has radically impacted our lives. It is from this personal encounter 
with the good news that we are empowered and pushed outwards to tell others about Jesus. And God provides opportunities every day. But the question is, how do we take advantage of those opportunities? We must tell our story in our own peculiar way. All of us. All of us. All of us. All of us. How do we tell this story? How do we tell this story? We must love and know our city. I say again. We must love and know our city so that we are able to disciple it. We must study the complexities of our city. We must understand the culture of our city. But how will we, will we do this if we are uninterested? Let me ask you. Let me ask you. How will you be missional if you do not know your area chief? You are so heaven bound that you don't know your area chief and you want to be missional. How many people know the MCA of where we are? At least by name. Do you even know the word? Ama wewe hujihusishi na mabwe ya siyasa. Wewe ni mutu wa God. Na mabwe ya siyasa ni ya wawud. When, when, when we decided to move to Thika, our father said we moved to Thika and we obeyed and moved. And recently, I felt the pinch ya mafuta ya gari. The high cost of living. And it got me thinking. So why am I in Thika? Why do I have to drive all the way from Thika to Nairobi every day? Why can't I move somewhere near there? Why did I come to? Why are you where you are? How well do you know where you are? How are you saying that you are being missional if you do not even know where you live? Try to jog your mind. Try to jog your mind. How well do you know where you live? If something was to happen to you today, which is your nearest police station, at least for you, a security, because I know you love yourself so much. What is your nearest police station? Where is the nearest children's home where you can go and serve those children? You say we want to clean this city, probably as a missional, as a missional endeavor. Do you even know who runs this city? Are you interested? You know, I'm asking you that as I am asking myself. We must love, pray, and know our city. The only way we will be able to be missional is if we understand the culture of this city. If we had time, I would have gone to Jeremiah 29 and shown you that we ought to love this city because this is where we are. This is where we are. This is where we are. All of us have been called to be mission. All of us. So as I watch your six, watch mine. As I watch your six, watch mine. Can I trust that you got my six? Can you trust that I love you so much that I got you a six? That as we go out there to be missional, as, as we interact with those chokoras and the people who from the way have been cultured think are downtrodden, I am of a different opinion. Wale watu wakona pesa wengine wakona shida kubwa kuliko hao. Kuliko hao. As we interact, as we go to any length, the likes of Paul and Timothy, and the men of old in the, in the first church, in the early church, did not fear even for their own lives. Even for their own lives. As we go out there and be missional, to extents that sometimes we we'll threaten our own lives, can I trust that I have people who watch my six? Can I be watching somebody's six? That is the call I am making today. And the way to do that is in the small things that we do including 
paying our tithe, paying our offering, and paying for the rent of the hall where we gather. Let's stand up. I know we have been following Jesus all these years. We have. We have. The other day, Dad here said, said he helped us see the journey that Jesus walked through the through the through the synoptic gospels. The time the time he was doing ministry. He began with he began with doing miracles and actions but it got to a time when he had to ask a very pertinent question who do you say i am and it's only after the disciples understood who Jesus was remember peter saying you are the christ of lord and jesus telling him you are peter the rock and on this foundation i'll build my church and even the gates of hell shall not prevail and after that after that after that period Jesus began to show, to show the disciples the kind of life they must live and he makes he makes a call he makes a call and he tells them he tells them he tells them in Luke 9:23 27 he said to all, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. If anyone would come after him, after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. And brethren, I hear that this is our call today. A fresh call. Does it mean the disciples were not following Jesus before? They were they left their businesses and followed Jesus. But he makes a fresh call. If anyone, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. This is our call. We have been doing this ministry in this family for the number of years we have done. But here is the call. Our lenses have been cleansed. And this is the call. If anyone if anyone. Can we pray and ask God to help us? Can we pray and ask God to help us? That we will deny ourselves and follow him. Take up our crosses daily, daily, daily and follow Jesus. And follow Jesus. We thank you Lord for your word. Thank you for loving us so much that you have given us your word. And you are calling us back again, back again to follow you. You have revealed yourself to us. We know who you are through the gospel that you have given us. And together as a family, we have broken down that gospel. And we have come to understand it. And Lord, we ask today, we ask today, we ask today, Lord, that you will help us. You will help us to hear this voice and follow it that we will deny ourselves and take up our cross daily and follow you and follow you and fall to the point of death to the point of death we pray that you give us boldness to do this even when circumstances do not allow even when circumstances do not allow in whatever places lord you have put us whatever circles of influence lord you have put us we pray we pray lord that you will help us to carry this cross, this cross that is your gospel and dispense it to your people. You will help us to love this city and become interested as we pray for it. As we pray for it. For the welfare of this city is our welfare too. In the name of Jesus we pray that Lord you will help us. You will give us your grace to do these things for the sake of your glory. For the sake of your glory. For the sake of your glory.